Hi, this is Rhonda Kitchens. I am your librarian at Big Bend Community College and the Lum C. Bonatti Library. I am here to help you. I love for you to be successful. Always reach out to me if you need me. I'm talking about the evaluation of resources today, like how do we know if one resource is better than another? Fundamentally, sometimes when you start working on a new topic, you really don't know. And this is really kind of a framework, and there are like different things you can put at it, but I'm just going to give you an easy framework that you not only can use to do a better search, you can also use it for annotation. You can also use it for peer review with some papers. So this little framework might have a lot of value to you. This is important enough that um, I've <laughs> have dedicated an entire page to it, and you'll see it in some different ways. One of the, the CRAAP test stands for is currency, relevancy, accuracy, authority, and purpose. Let's go through those. Currency has to do with the information in context of how you need it. If we're working with nursing, nutrition, or science, we probably want the past three to five years. If we're working with current events, we really don't want anything older than a year, probably. If you're working uh, with somebody who's a lawyer, you might want almost all the law of all time researched. Currency is contextual. So make sure when you look at your research question and your thesis, what kind of currency does that need? Our next thing is relevancy. And again, that's all about what you're writing about. Uh, it's also like, what audience level are you working for? Is it general, the public, scholars? Are you doing a speech? Uh, do you need some um, facts? Do you need statistics? Do you need like a really beautiful research paper? Or do you need um, some information from biographies of people who were involved in it? What types of things do you need? This is again going to be anchored to that thesis question, and it should be part of your search. Like, what do I need? Do I need quotations? Do I need statistics? All of these are key words that you can use in your research. Accuracy and authority, sometimes I kind of mush these together, but really you should sort of look at them apart. But accuracy, does the author refer to other work in the research? That is, if they're writing to you that daisies make us happy, did they tell you what kind of research or where they got that from? Or are they themselves an authority of some sort that you can document, find, and attribute to? What kind of language or imagery or tone is used? Is this emotional, objective, professional? Kind of understand what it is you're looking for. Do you want something that is scientific? If you want something that's kind of uh, more oriented towards doing a pleasant fact-finding mission, that you can do a wonderful, perhaps even funny um, speech? There's different ways that you can use to look for those things as well. So we're looking at authority. Um, authority sometimes, especially when we're looking at a scholarly article, is really kind of easy to find. We understand who they're connected to and why. We can also understand or find things about their institution. Does their institution that they're connected to have some sort of bias? Are they an expert? And if they are an expert, are they well regarded? There are very different ways that we can find this out, and it's all out there available for you to locate. Purpose. Now, why was it written? What is this information? Why was it created? Was it to inform, teach, entertain, or persuade? Like, for instance, this is totally to inform. I want you to know about this framework of looking at research information in your search results. Was it written in emotion, or are there other points of view? Is there something missing? Is there some sort of bias? Um, kind of look at how the author's affiliation may affect a point of view. And um, in some cases, is bias is just a, your way of looking at things. It's not entirely a negative word. You just need to know what it is. So let's kind of look at this page a little bit more, because I break it down so many ways. The CRAAP test evaluation is also a great way to write your annotations or do peer reviews, as well as building your research or your or search strategy. Your search strategy can definitely uh, break things down to certain dates. You can also find the relevance by picking those keywords that are specific to your search. You can find out about the people who've written or created this information, and as you read through it, you can totally figure out why something exists. So. 
I'm saying you could also use this, use this for annotation in that when you're writing, sometimes um, follow your directions of your professor, of course, but usually the directions uh, probably are 300 words or under, and you could start writing about its currency, when it was written, how it's relevant to your particular search, why its accuracy, and the authority of those people who put it together, and the purpose and what it is. That will give you a beautiful annotation, and you can also, when you're doing peer reviews, look at your uh, fellow class goers' um, references. Are they up to date? Are they the best they can do? Are they actually relevant? And you can really help them down a far better research path. So again, I just want to show you C-R-A-A-P, Currency, Relevancy, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. Currency can be used as part of your search when you're building your search strategy. You can use the database to lock down the time frames you need. Relevancy is driven by your problem or thesis statement. When you look at your thesis statement, call out the keywords that are most relevant to your search and then look for their synonyms and other ways of finding them. Also, and this is inside information, how your assignment lets you know what's relevant. It does. Sometimes what's relevant is how you are graded. Actually, much of the time. So if you look at your rubric or your assignment, it goes, I want an academic article, I want primary materials or secondary resources. This gives you a clue about what you should be looking for in your research. I'm just going to give you a little taste of what that may look like. Suppose your research has to do with finding the dietary supplements that are nutritionally correct for diabetes. So when you go up here, your relevancy determines what sort of keywords you use and how you use them. This may be a little bit too specific, but I'm going to go in this direction anyway. Another thing may be uh, that's relevant is <laughs> full text. What you see is what you get. And it may be in the rubric or the assignment, you need at least one scholarly peer-reviewed article. So this is how you're setting up your search to fit, pre-fit the evaluation criteria that you already know that you need. When you go into the search, then you can look at different types of things. This is talking about um, pregnant women specifically. That may or may not be one of the points that you're using. All of these seem to be talking about gestational types of nutrition. And it may be, if you go back up here, you can add another field and get rid of pregnancy. And I'm going to use truncation. So we'll get rid of that. Whoops. It's over the eight. So that might make it too small. But we'll see. Oh, and it got rid of those. And I may also add the word gestational, but you get the kind of idea. You use what you're looking for to make it relevant. You also use this to make sure that it's current. Do you need the past year? Is this a current thing that you need to work on. Right now, um, unless you're looking at the history of COVID, you probably want to use things that are really up to date in the past few months. So make sure that you're looking at things like that. Now, also be aware that the more specific you get, the less research results you get. But if you're just looking at one, that may be really quite okay because you can get so many different types of resources, but you're just looking for the ones that you need. And you'll be able to look at these different people. Let's kind of pop in here and we see who these are. And this goes to authority and accuracy. And we see they are affiliated with uh, an a Iranian um, university. If you're working on something in terms of United States, a United States diet, that affiliation, that author authority may already kind of not fit what you're looking for. And it may also tell you to go up here and put an United States. But while you're here, look at some of the subject terms to see if you might be able to find different ways to do your research. Anyway, I hope this helped because crop test is more than just evaluating your search work. So your um is evaluating your search results, but it also helps you do your search strategy. It can help you annotate. It can help you build all these components so that you're able to have this holistic point of view about your research. Anyway, I hope you find this helpful. And if not, track me down. My name is Rhonda Kitchens. I would love to talk to you and help you out as a librarian. Have a great day.